This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I don't know about you, but I love to post process my images. I cannot wait after being out to photograph birds or animals to get home and start to upload my images onto the computer and started to edit them right away. But I have some friends and they actually don't like to edit images. They don't like to spend too much time on doing that, either because it's a little bit too hard to do because they don't have the knowledge or they don't have the interest of doing that at all. So therefore I thought I'm going to put down another video on how I edit my images and take you along with me. I don't know if you saw my last video where I photographed the gold crest. I, if you didn't, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. But I showed you some tips and tricks and how I photographed that bird. And now I'm going to show you how I edit them in Lightroom so you can follow along. So I'm going to go through a couple of images. I think I got some cool uh, shots of that day there. And I'm going to choose a couple of images and show you the way Let's go into Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom. And this picture here I really like. It's simple, it's clean, and I like the pose of the gold crest here. So I'm going to start with cropping in uh, to like around here. And if you see, I think maybe I will go a little tighter in here. And I might go in and and make this a little tilted here and the reason why is just I want a little separation from the branch here the ISO on this one here is 1600 and 500 millimeter at f4 and 250 of a second so because I'm using ISO 1600 on the D500 you can see there is some noise in the background here but I'm going to deal with that a little bit later. I think I'm going to start with cranking up the vibrance there and a little bit saturation. This is actually my default uh, that I use every time, almost every time that I edit my images. Uh, I don't want to go too far on the saturation or vibrance. I don't like overdoing the, the color saturation here. Uh, there is enough colors uh, in before but I'm going to uh, later on on Photoshop I'm going to play a little around with the curves uh, tones on the red just to make it a little warmer and uh, there are some red tones in the pictures so I'm just going to saturate those the next thing I'm going to do is uh, to make a little clarity uh, I like that and uh, let me see check the histogram here you can see there is a little gap here between the highlights and you see it's clipping in the shadow parts and uh, that is the dark area down in the corner here uh, but what i'm going to do is actually to fill that little gap there i don't want to go too much but i'm going to uh, break down the highlights a little bit because this area here uh, can be uh, easily a little bit too bright so I don't want to do that. So after doing that, uh, I don't think I'm going to bother doing anything about that little area there. I'm not going to do anything sharpening right now uh, because I am actually going to bring it into Topaz to do a little denoising before I do anything. Um, the, and one thing I probably should do before I do the denoise is to check the white balance. I think the white balance is pretty good here, but let me play a little bit around and see if it could be a little bit better. Maybe a little more warmth than it was originally is better here actually. Yeah, I like that. So let me keep this and now head into Topaz Denoise. So here we are into Topaz Denoise. And to be honest, Topaz Denoise is the best software I have used to remove the noise. And, but it's preserving the, the sharpness in the image. So I really like Topaz Denoise. So uh, what it's doing now, it's like processing the uh, settings on my right uh, hand here. 
and the default is set to auto so uh, the topaz denoise is like uh, analyzing the image and make the amount of removed noise and enhance sharpness uh, depending on how it like uh, processing the image so here are the result you can see uh, it's quite okay it's removed all the noise as you can see here uh, and it's really good on details as well I think I might go a little bit back on the denoise here uh, try around 10 because uh, there is a lot of noise there but not too much let's see how it's going to be with a little bit lesser remove of noise I think that was a much better result you can see here it removed all the all of the noise and preserved much more of the sharpness and actually sharpen it quite good so uh, you see that I don't need to sharpen it in the Lightroom it sharpened it, uh, sharpened it for me really good in Topaz Denoise. So remove the noise and sharpen the image. What more can you wish for? If you want to check that out yourself, I will leave a link in the description. And if you use the coupon code uh, TRON15, you can get 15% off your purchase of this beautiful program. So check out the link in the description. Now, here we are in Photoshop. So firstly, I'm going to deal with the, this little branch sticking out on the side there. Try to uh, take the content fill aware and see if I can do a good job. And it did remove everything perfectly. The next thing I'm going to do is to adjust with curves here. What I'm going to do is to uh, go into the red and I'm going to crank that uh, up a little bit here on the highlights and you can see the background is getting a little bit more warmth in the picture so the only thing I'm going to do now with this picture here I'm going to try to make you see all the details of the feathers here I'm going to um, increase that a little bit more and I really like the sharpness part if I'm just going to adjust a little bit more of the edges I like this uh, smart sharpening here on uh, Photoshop and I'm going to have the amount to 74% and the radius to 0 0.2 and reduce noise with 10% and press OK you can see it's having a little bit more details in the feathers here so and I like that uh, the next thing I would do uh, when I'm going to show the image on the video or in Facebook I'm going to make that white border uh, so what I'm doing to make those is to use this uh, I have no idea what this is called in English um, but it's right underneath the image size here this on 27 and this on 20 and make sure that the colors here are white and you press OK and boom there you go you get your white border after doing that I'm going to put in my name underneath here and like center that like this and make that a little bit weaker as I do it like this boom I am finished with that so my next image is a little bit more to uh, work with actually because uh, I really like this image here and I like the pose and I like the background but it's a little bit dark because suddenly the sun was starting to pop out as you can see on the side here and I should have uh, uh, increased my expo exposure compensation and more so I could bring uh, up the exposure for the birds even more so I can do something about that in post-processing of course and I was 
talking about this image here on the videos and talking about like increasing the, the shadow parts here on the breast uh, to get a little bit more details on the bird. So here I'm going to start with of course cropping the image uh, around here and I will take a little bit more in here maybe a little bit more like so so you can see here it's hitting one point there and it's aligned with the eyes and I like like the balance of the picture here and I'm going to press OK and yeah this looks good the next thing would be to increase the exposure you can see here it was quite far away from the edge uh, so I'm going to crank it up a little bit more like this and let me see what the shadow do, does if I just press the shadow here yeah that looks okay and I will of course bring the contrast uh, later and what I can do also to get some of the darker areas lesser darker I can actually uh, press minus five on D haze you see back and forth the whole image is getting lighter and of course a little bit more flatter but like I said I can bring in that contrast later on going to do the same thing with the vibrance and saturation here and I think I'm going to crank up the uh, white balance a little bit to the warmer side there but not too much I don't want the, everything you can see here once again you can see like um, more of a colder tones here and also here and on the branch there I don't want everything to be like neutral warm and then you lose the contrast to also I think that I can do to uh, do something about that flatness that will come when you are like increasing the shadows and uh, decreasing the dehaze is you can use clarity to bring some of that like contrast back I think this is starting to getting a little bit better but I'm still too dark on this side here so what I'm going to do is to use my brush here and I can use the dehaze actually and some of the shadow parts and see how that will be. See this actually open up quite good on those darker tones here. What I also like when I'm like increasing a shadow part here is I don't want it like to be uh, to try to make it look a little bit more natural I'm going to throw in some white there so let me see a little bit let me see how it reacts if I increase the exposure yeah let's just experiment a little bit with this Maybe a little bit more here and here. There is a color cast here, which I don't like. It's too warm and I think there is a, like a reflection of something that is causing this. So what I can do is take down the uh, temperature here and you can see I'm getting rid of some of that color cast there like this starting to get somewhere with this picture here still it's a little gap here I'm going to try to fill it in with increasing the whites and you can see all overall the image is starting to get it a little bit more brighter especially the background and that I really like this little branch here sticking out I don't like so I'm going to try to clone this away 
but I'm going to do that in Photoshop, not in Lightroom. But I think we are closing in. I'm not going to do anything sharpening. I'm going to bring this into Topaz as I did with the other picture. Let's go in editing and Topaz denoise. So here we are in Topaz and I'm going to leave that last setting that I had with the amount of 10 and hand sharpness of 40 and see what Topaz does with that. There's a little bit more noise on the bird hair that was on the other because I increased the shadow part and increasing the shadow parts means introducing a lot of noise. So let's see what Topaz does with that. And Topaz is finished and you can see it removed all the noise here, the background and also on the chest there. It does a really great job of sharpening those uh, sharp edges on the fe feathers on the upper um, side of the bird hair but it's not any form of details here but you can see here it's not much detail here as well so I can like try to uh, make it sharper in Photoshop or a hair or I can try to enhance the sharpness here but then I will enhance it here and I don't think that will look good, uh, but I think it's a little bit noise, but not too noisy. So actually I'm going to try to make the amount to, for example, like try to six there and see how that will be. Okay. Yeah, I think it does, did a much greater job here on the, uh, uh, underneath here and still preserving some details but removing enough noise uh, you can see on the background it is has removed a lot of noise but not as much as was last time I can play around with this much more but I think I'm not going to bother because when I zoom out on this picture here I won't like, recognize those noise here that much anyway and especially if the background is a little lighter, you don't see the noise as much as you do on a darker background. So I think this is good. I'm going to apply it and save it in Lightroom. Let's deal with this little brand sticking out here. So what I'm going to do, uh, firstly, I'm going to use the clone. Uh, try to separate the, that bottom hair. just really really quickly now as I have separated this I'm going to use that lasso tool here I call it magic tool last time but this is a lasso tool not a magic tool like this if I'm going to put this in the contest I cannot clone or do anything of this but uh, oops <laughs> but I'm not going to use this for a anything other than just Facebook so um, then I don't mind to like do a little cloning here just to clean up the image a little bit more the next thing would be to do that that I was doing last time with the curves and have the uh, red colors here and bring that up you can see the background is getting a little bit more warmth and reddish and I like that but not too much though but a little bit here starting to look good I'm going to apply that little sharpness thing that I did before with smart smart sharpening and press OK I might try to do the curves once again with uh, the whole RGB uh, here to bring it a little bit more lighter and like this and what I'm going to do is to take it down on the black hair just to get a little bit more contrast I think I'm happy with this and just going to apply the white border here thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video Skillshare is an online learning community with tons of videos all from photography videography cooking, languages, all you can think of.
For the moment, I am enjoying a class of famous YouTuber Marcus Brownlee. He has tons of experience of crafting videos. He explains how he made his videos and all his experience on crafting. When it comes to YouTube, I really try to stretch myself. So therefore Skillshare is a great place to expand your knowledge. And right now we are giving away free trialship. The first thousand people who click the link below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Once again, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video.